the songs of Brahma Sanghita as Chintamani Prapara Sadbasu will surely help such souls in their march toward the personality of Godhead in the spiritual kingdom, which is lying beyond their sensuous gaze of inspection. The so called astronomers cannot even definitely give us information of the visible sky which is over flooded with sunlight during daytime and moonlight at night. We can have our learn about spiritual kingdom from the Bhagavad Gita that it is situated far, far beyond the visible sky and in that sky there is no need of sunlight or moonlight or even electricity. There are innumerable spiritual planets in that self-effulgent sky and the cross estimate of that sky is given in the Bhagavad Gita that the material world wherein there are innumerable suns and moon is only one-fourth of the own kingdom of God. This material world is also part of the kingdom of God. But this kingdom of God is described as made of inferior energy on account of its temporary nature and is compared with a mass of clouds in the sky. When there is a mass of clouds in the sky, there is certainly torrents of rain and there is a type of creation of new vegetation on account of such rainfall. But in spite of all such variegatedness, manifestation of greenery, seen, of fruits and flowers, the whole show is only temporary. When the season is over, everything fades away into different situations and the temporary manifestation comes to an end. Therefore, the material world is called three phases of existence namely creation, sustenance, and dissolution at last. This creation and dissolution is going on perpetually like seasonal changes and the portion of the vast sky where such temporary variegatedness is taking place and again becoming out of sight is called the material world. And beyond this material manifestation of variegatedness, there is the world of spiritual sky where everything is eternal, full of light, blissful, and knowledge, distinct from the non eternal, miserable existence of ignorance. In the material world, everything is struggling hard for existence. But the cruel laws of material nature will not allow anybody to exist, although every one of us aspires to exist eternally in full, blissful life of perfect knowledge. This information is available in the Brahma Sanghita, that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Krishna, and His transcendental form is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. In the spiritual world, not only Krishna has His eternal body, full of bliss and knowledge, but also everyone who associates with Krishna has the same spiritual nature. In the abode of Krishna, which is called Chintamani Dhamma, the land, the trees, the animals, the residents, everything is of the same spiritual nature as that of Krishna. This spiritual nature is expansion of interior energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is called the cause of all causes. It is said that Brahma, who wrote Brahma Sangita after his mature knowledge by meditation, it was revealed in him that by the recollection of Bhakti Yoga, it appeared to him that he is the eternal maid servant of Krishna. Though other mysteries in regard to the condition of the maid servant of Krishna were not revealed to him, Brahma, by dint of his searching self-consciousness, became well acquainted with the ocean of truth. All the truths of the Vedas were revealed to him, and with the help of those essence of the Vedas, he offered this hymn 
to the supreme lord shri krishna shriman mahaprabhu lord chaitanya has taught this hymn to his favorite disciples in as much as it fully contains all the transcendental truths regarding vaishnava philosophy the audience the hearers of this record are requested to study and try to enter into the spirit of this hymn with great care and attention as a regular daily function the first verse is translated i worship govinda the prime by lord the first progenitor who is tending the cows fulfilling all desires in the abodes built with spiritual gems surrounded by millions of purpose trees always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds of thousands of lakshmis or gopis by the word chintamani is meant transcendental gem just as a uh, maya builds the mundane universe with the five material elements so the spiritual chit potency has built the spiritual world of transcendental gems the chintamani which serves as material in the building of the above supreme lord's place goloka he is a far rarer and more agreeable entity than the philosopher stone the purpose tree only the fruits of piety wealth fulfillment of desires and liberation but the purpose trees in the abode of krishna bestows innumerable fruits ending the fulfillment of desire or oceans of meal in the shape of the fourteen love soaring transcendental bliss that take away with the hunger and thirst of all pure devotees the trees in the abode of lord krishna can supply anything desired by the devotees the devotees residing in the abode of krishna have not desired to fulfill still there are variegated transcendental desires of the devotees to satisfy their eternal lord in loving service in the material world a tree can supply only the fruits that it can produce but in the spiritual world any tree can supply any amount of fruits or any variety of fruits to the aspirant devotee the second verse is translated I worship Govinda, the prime and lord, who is adept on playing on his flute with blooming eyes like lotus petals, with head bedecked with peacock feather, with the figure of beauty tinged with the hue blue clouds, and his unique loveliness charming millions of gopis. The matchless beauty of Krishna. the supreme lord or govinda is being described krishna the all pervading cognizant has the spiritual form of youth the form of krishna is not a fanciful creation of imagination formed after visualizing the beautiful things of the world like the poet or the artist when brahma saw in his ecstasy trans a pure devotion He is being described. Krishna is engaged in playing upon his flute that attracts the hearts of all living beings. Just as a lotus petal produces a pleasant sigh, so the two beautiful eyes of Krishna, who causes the manifestation of our spiritual vision, display the unlimited splendor and beauty of his moon-like face. The loveliness that adorns his head. with peacock feather is gorgeous the surrounding a uh, feature of the spiritual beauty of krishna just as a mass of blue clouds offer a specifically soothing pleasant view the complexion of krishna is analogously tinged with a spiritual dark blue color the beauty and loveliness of krishna is far more enchanting than that of cupid multiplied a million four the next verse is translated i worship govinda the prime and lord round whose neck is swing a garland of flowers a beautified with moon locket whose two hands are adorned with flute and jewel ornament who always reveals in past times of love 
whose graceful threefold bending form of Samsundar is eternally manifested. In this sloka beginning with Chintavane Prakara Sadmasu, the transcendental region and the spiritual names of Govinda in this sloka beginning with Govinda Adi Purusam Tavang Bhajami, the eternal beautiful form of Govinda and in this sloka the amorous pastimes of Govinda Pranayakeli means the amorous pastimes of Govinda, the embodiment of 64 excellences have been described. All the spiritual affairs have come within this scope of description and the narration of the ecstatic mellow qualities or rasa are included in the spiritual amorous order of Govinda. Lord Krishna Govinda is always visible with his eternal consort Radharani. This conjugal living pair is called by Narthanda Thakur as Jugala Pirit. Jugala Pirit means conjugal love. The conjugal love is existing originally in the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, and that is reflected only in the material world in a perverted form. 